Cthulhu Death May Die is a cooperative game for 1-5 to five players in which you take on the role of an investigator, trying to defeat an elder god that has been summoned to Earth. There is no preventing any rituals here, it's already underway. You have to collect clues and find a way to halt it, so that you can take a shot at the gods themselves. All the while you will be fighting monstrous horrors, solving puzzles, trying to keep your sanity. Now, I'm a huge fan of Lovecraft's work, and I love the Fantasy Flight Games Arkham series, but what I love about this game is it feels so different. Now the tropes are there, the clues, the cultists, the mythos effects and such. Yet about the same kind of look and feel as, as the uh, Fantasy Flight games have had throughout the years. Playing this game feels like you're in the end game every time you play. You spend the first half of the game trying to stop the ritual, then the remainder shooting, blasting and literally beating to death an ancient one back to wherever they came from. Inside Death May Die we get two elder ones, Hastor and Cthulhu. Each one has its own abilities, its own attacks, its own minions, and mythos cards. If we take a look inside Cthulhu, we have the Cthulhu figure, which is really smart and detailed. Uh, Starspawn, which is a big, bad sort of a little cousin kind of character. Um, their own set of mythos cards, which are shuffled into the episode and act as a sort of end of turn effects, like horrors, summoning enemies, and other nastiness hindering the game. And also we have, each one has its own set of minions. So for instance, Cthulhu here has the Cultist and Starspawn, the Health, the Dash Roll for the Attacks and certain Abilities too. This is also the Cthulhu Stage Cards. So this one stays on the board at all times, Stage 1. It tells us when the Cthulhu advances, the Ritual, what effects to do. And the next stages are used when the ritual is instructed, Cthulhu goes onto the game board and we can actually fight him using these cards. He has three stages with separate effects, separate attacks, and different effects when revealed and end of turn effects. The game consists of six episodes. So here's season one, episode one to six, by my old style VHS, no DVD tapes. Each one has a different kind of story, different goals, different objectives, different monsters set mythos cards and other tokens and effects. For instance, in the box of the first episode, the Blasphemous Alchemy gives you instructions on how to set the board up, tiles, placements of monsters, other icons, other effects. The back of the card contains the story, contains objectives, actions, and what happens when the other one advances. We use this to help us with the ritual, which helps the game progress, which we'll explain in a second on the storyboard. Each episode has its own specific minions based on monsters based on the theme of the episode. For instance, here we have the Fire Vampire, and I forgot how to pronounce that, is it Biaki? I can't pronounce that. Each of its own effects and attack dice. Each one has its own mythos cards that shuffle together with the Eldor mythos cards to create the mythos deck. These are revealed at the end of turn and do certain effects. They can even make the ritual summon go along and the ritual advance. Uh, and other tokens and so forth, such as the fire tokens and the lab tokens, which go along with the story. And each episode has its own discovery cards. At the end of the turn, if you're in a space without a monster, you can draw one of these. It has certain effects, certain things you have to take, you have to take wounds or take stress to claim them. You can claim such as a pistol and a companion, other items, artifacts, and weapons. Each game will require the storyboard set up first. This is the whole information, contains information on the Elder One episodes, episode monsters, Elder One minions. To start off, take the Ancient One and place it on the first track of the Ritual track. Every time the Elder One advances, you move it along and do the effects that are listed on the card. For instance here, if Cthulhu advances, you follow these effects down here. If it reaches this before he's been summoned, the game is over. When he is summoned and put onto the board, this is used in its place because even though he's on the board, the track can still be advanced and he still do the effects of the card. When he is on the board, we use the stage cards here to fight him, and they'll go in this slot up here, which goes just there, and put that back. Next is the slot for the episode. Now this will contain information about the story, how to stop the ritual, which is the key objective and how we win the game, what happens when the other one advances, which will be other effects, and episode action, and these are important, these are what you're going to want to work towards to finish the episode. For instance, to stop the, to stop the ritual, we have to destroy four of the five labs, which are the there are these blue tokens on the board. 
To do so, we need to deal four or more wounds to them and destroy the equipment action, which is the one down here. So make a roll against the lab in your space. Each assess deals one wound to the lab. When it has four more wounds, destroy the litter turn it over the lab to reveal its effect. So to do four of these, we do four, the ritual is instructed. Now instructing the ritual is how we get the, the ancient one from here onto the board and then flip us over to the next stage we can start to fight them. And that's how we win, by fighting all three stages of the ancient one. And this is how we win the game. Next up is a slot for the Elder One minions. These are the Elder One specific minions, so the Gatultis and the Starspawn, which go here to help information. And also each episode has their monsters, which go here in a nice little slot. It's a really cool little hub of information here we have. We can get all the information of the episode, their monsters, their health, their abilities, and their attack icons, and what they do. When you pick an episode, each player picks a starting investigator, or two players solo, with their player board. And you also take a randomly chosen insanity card here, and place it next to your character. These are triggered by certain effects in the game and have sometimes negative effects. Some are worse than others, some depend on the situation. For instance, fear of crowds has take one stress of each other figure in your space. If you're alone, heal of your stress instead. So they're not always too bad, but they can be quite annoying. Uh, we have each figure for each character. You take an associated colour from the bottom of your character, tentacle icons that match, and place it on each of the starting points of your player board. So on the player board, we have list of your turn, your actions you can take, run, attack, rest, heal, trade, and episode specific actions, which are on the back of the episode board. And after that, you draw a Mythos card, investigate or fight, see how we're going to fight a monster, or if you're in a safe space, draw a discovery card, and end of turn effects. We have the wound and stress uh, tracks down here. Obviously, the wounds are just damage. When you take to hit zero, your character has died and you're out of the game. Stress is used to re-roll dice and some discovery cards let you take stress to get certain actions. Uh, this isn't so bad, when it hits zero, we don't die. This is just used to re-roll dice, but having it quite high up is always handy to avoid damage, avoid sanity damage. Uh, you can use it to re-roll when you're attacking, to re-roll when you're doing an effect, such as an episode action, or re-roll when you're being attacked by a monster, so it's always really handy to have high stress. You can rest and re recover these easily. Sanity can be recovered, unfortunately. We have a large track for a sanity bar to go up. When it hits zero, we're dead. Uh, these little purple spots here are sort of checkpoints. If you take sanity damage in one go, it'll stop here and it'll fence anymore for that effect. So if you've been attacked by an enemy, say you're here and you take three damage, you'll only hit that one point for that instance. Hitting that point there stops the sanity damage for that, that uh, instance. Trigger your sanity card, but also levels up one of your skills. Now, each character has three skills, and they all vary differently. For instance, this guy has a good skill here called Marksman. You can take a target one space away, which is really handy. So if I hit that, I can level that up, and I gain two green dice to attack a target not in my space. And I do it again, I attack a target in this space away, and so forth. And you can do this any way you want. You could do one, one turn, you hit the next one, you could do somewhere else next go, it's up to you. Okay, so I've got here the first episode, we've got a small portion of it anyway, based on the back of the episode card. There's little numbers on the tiles here, like 4A, 8A, 8A 8B, to help you find it better. Here we have a cultist on board, a backing monster, starting space, investigator, uh, fire spaces, the lab tokens, these are portal spaces which are used to summon enemies to certain mythos card effects. Uh, these are stairs, you can transition to different, different levels. And that's it, so you can do three actions on your turn. You can do the same action more than once, it's up to you. And there are four actions that are available in every episode and two that are unique to the episode. So for starters, we can move. Now we can move up to three spaces. You follow the arrows on the board to go wherever you want. Bear in mind that if you leave a space with a monster, they will follow you. There's no evade uh, action in this game. Enemies will literally just follow you wherever you go. So, unless the character is in skill, obviously. Some have a style skill, let's run past them. So if I was to move here, and then move to here, these two guys will follow me. So the, and wherever else I go from there on, they still follow me. So I move to there afterwards, they follow me. If you gain a fire token, place it on your character board, then you roll a dice, take a boon for each success you take to get rid of the fire. You can also attack enemies. Now, unless your character has a certain skill, with a marksman skill, but if you haven't got that marksman skill, you have in the same space as the enemy. Now, to attack an enemy, 
you use the dice. Now there are three black dice and five green dice. Each dice has different symbols, so we have the success rate, which is used to make something successful, a damage. If you roll this against an enemy and get this, this counts as one damage. Enemy attacks you and get this, it's one damage towards you. We also have the tentacle effect, which indicates sanity damage, sanity loss. Important with this is, no matter what you're doing, if you do a test, if you're defending an enemy, if you're attacking an enemy, if you hit this, your sanity character, your character will lose sanity Sorry, on the board, so watch out for these. And try as your stress to re-roll to avoid them because you can't recover sanity. There's also on some of them um, a success and sanity icon, which can do both. The Elder Sign symbols do nothing, but some characters' effects, some um, Elder ones, some minions, have something that will say, if you roll this, you get a certain thing, counters like success, counters damage, counters so forth. Um, for starting off, you'll only ever use three green, di three black dice, sorry. When you play progress on the game, you want to unlock more green dice in your attacks and get stronger as you play, certain skills and certain abilities. When you roll a dice, check your results. Now I've got three, I could take three stress to re-roll all three dice. You tap one token at a time, unless the skill ties you otherwise. Do enough damage to the token using the episode card left to see. See they have two health there, so if I did two damage, I managed to kill the enemy and they'd be dead. You can also rest to recover three health or three stress, or a combination of the two. You can recover two health and one stress, it's up to you but only in a safe space, so you can't stay in a space with enemies and use the recover action. And finally you have the trade action, where you can trade items you've got from the game, such as the discovery items that you put as to your character, you can trade the character in the safe space as you. And lastly, there are the episode actions. So for instance, here I can destroy one of the labs. So if I was in a space for a lab token, I roll a dice and deal damage using the dice. If I did four or more, tokens flipped over, um, I get a certain effect, and that's one of the four done. When I've done all four, virtual is disrupted. So these are very important. We're always going to go towards objective. It's very important to do that. When you've done three actions, you'll draw a Mythos card. You draw one and resolve it. These symbols, when three of these are in the discard pile, the ritual is advanced. Sorry, Elder One is advanced, and you do the certain effects in the back of the card. So, for instance, here we do the top text first. So each cult is in one space towards you. And if you're in your Ryla space, which is one of the tokens here that get placed for certain effects, lose one sanity also. And also it tells me here to summon cultists on the red and yellow portals. So there's a red portal that's on the other side of the board, which I haven't put on the game board yet, because I just wanted to show you what the game is like. Once you've done that, depending on where you are, you either get attacked or a discovery card. If I end in a space in, with enemies, they'd attack me each in sequence, using the character card here. So with this, I get two green dice. If I roll two hits, I take two wounds. If I roll the elder sign, it wouldn't do anything unless a, unless a certain effect on my character board or, just, or a discovery card told me to do so otherwise. If they weren't in my space, nothing was there. Instead, I just draw a, score, a, instead, I just draw a discovery card and choose one of the actions so I can take three wounds to clean the ambulance of Nagal or clean the spirit of Nagal instead, a companion or an item which will help me out in the game and let me progress faster. When the ritual is disrupted, the Elder One enters the board on the spawn location destruction instructions. Then you can directly fight the Elder One yourself, which is uh, it's unusual because actually take down the Elder One with, your, with you and your friends. You attack him like a normal enemy, he will follow you like a normal enemy and does certain effects based on the game uh, board itself. Once all three stages of the Elder One have been completed, the Elder One is killed and you won the game. If investigators have been killed, when the Elder One has been spawned, or the progress token has reached the end, the game is over, and we have lost, and you've lost. The laugh about this game is it's paced so well. You'll start off early with not many skills, level up your characters, just start off investigating the area, doing objectives. As the tension slowly ramps up, when one says someone to place, the other one slowly creeps up on you, the effects are sticking in, and then when the other one hits the board, the whole game just changes. It was a desperate race then, in a bid to destroy the elder one. It's, but don't get too carried away because the other one is strong and he'll fight back. And that's basically the game in a nutshell. Um, it feels different than other Fantasy Flight games, the Arkham games. You get the same uh, things like Mythos Effects, Cultists, Rituals and the Monsters. But it doesn't feel as... You feel stronger in this. You feel like you're a warrior. You can fight back. You actually have... You can take the other one on yourself. 
which is it's a great change in the uh, pacing to the games. It's, it feels it's still got the horror elements. It's still got to the suspense and the um, looming, looming sense of dread, but the ability to actually get the Elder One, disrupt the ritual, and take him on on the board feels really good to play with. It's so it's so fun. Each each episode is different. So different objectives, different um, outcomes. And so each one plays completely differently. Quite different strategies, different characters, different abilities will be uh, useful. Um, each game feels different. Hassor plays differently to Cthulhu with his effects and his um, minions too. Because of the different episodes, different minions, the game has much replayability factor. You have 10 investigators, two elder ones, and six episodes. Um, so there's lots of replayability uh, in the game. Um, Mechanically, it runs quite well. It's quite smooth. It doesn't take long to learn. There's only so many actions. There's only a few actions you can take, and there's not too many effects. And all the things you can do less the back of the card of the character. Um, and that's it for Cthulhu Death May Die. It's a, it's a great little game. Um, the artwork is fantastic. Definitely worth the price. Um, it's a massive box. F and fits in nicely. I should have pointed that out. So the box is compacted, and F and folds away, and it's put away neatly, and it fits in nicely back into the box. The uh, setup time is not too long-winded because um, there's not too many tiles and each one requires just a set number of items so as long as the box is organised you'll be able to set up the game quite fast. Um, all the characters have certain abilities, each one feels individual, each one has a unique, each one's unique, each one has set certain number of skills and has a different kind of play style. Um, there's many monsters, there's many uh, enemies, cultists um, in the box. And that's it for the Death May Die review. Um, it's definitely worth picking up. If you're a fan of the Lovecraft-themed games, maybe you want to take a break from the Fantasy Flight series, I recommend getting this. If you want just a game where you can sort of dungeon crawl the RPG-style game where you fight enemies and solving mysteries, definitely a game for you. It's um, I wouldn't say it's as hard as any of the other ones, such as Alvich Horror or Arkham Horror, Manchester of Madness. But it feels very similar, so if you're familiar with those games, this game will feel right at home of you. You'll get jumped straight into it and be like, ah, I know what a test is. Mythos card effects, sanity loss is important. Yeah, I understand. Um, and that's it. Um, it's a great game, and I can't recommend it enough. And thanks for watching.